I think one of the most uh, debated, discussed topics around uh, uh, in the country today, I think probably post-COVID, in terms of, uh, you know, how do we ensure uh, economic opportunities for our young people in the country uh, by skilling, by employment, and by entrepreneurship? How do we make sure that we are here, uh, that we together as a community can tap into the unlimited potential of young people that exists and make sure that uh, the demographic dividend that we are talking about really becomes a massive dividend for the country and for each of our young people families. Uh, and till date, well, we've had uh, several, uh, you know, uh, pockets of uh, excellences or islands of excellence. Uh, we as a country have not been able to crack this at scale uh, in every nook and corner of our country. And especially coming from a CSR standpoint where a large part uh, of uh, the CSR budget is, uh, uh, is, is looking at, at this dividend and what we can do. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this conversation to hear from uh, uh, all of you and to add to the ideas of what we can do together as a collaborative, as a collective, as a community. Uh, what have worked, what has not worked in the past, and uh, you know, what should action for 2021 look like? Uh, especially uh, if you were to look at outcomes uh, that we can generate, that we need to generate for more than about 100 million youth who are slated to enter the workforce in this decade. Uh, and and, 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 and uh, with that, I just wanted to probably just get, get the conversation going. Uh, uh, you know, we'll do a couple of rounds of discussions amongst us and pick up on your points, and then we'll probably take the last 10, 15 minutes uh, uh, for a discussion on questions by the audiences. So if I can uh, just start off by uh, each one of you, A, probably uh, giving a quick background of the work that you've done in this uh, space and uh, your reflections on, uh, on building resilience uh, for, uh, in the country, especially for our young people to uh, kind of grab the opportunities that the world throws up with both their hands. Um, I think it'll be great to get started. So should we just uh, get started with you, uh, Kamal? Yeah, sure, Madan. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Pleasure to be here. Madan, sorry I missed out on the last one. Uh, but glad to be here. Uh, is, I think you have always uh, set up uh, very important imperatives and interesting topics where we all can contribute. Uh, so uh, let me uh, share my perspective over the next four to five minutes, Madan, um, on this whole thing. I have uh, five, four or five points to make here. Uh, I think uh, the, just to set the context uh, from my point of view and as, as well as what we can do together. So one, I think India needs jobs. Very, very clearly, India needs jobs. And the economy needs skills. I think that's the that's the uh, very, very clear paradigm. Because as you rightly said, there is a growing young population, need to create 100 million jobs over the next 8 to 10 years. There is a $10 trillion economy ambition. Uh, of course, we also have 50% dropouts prior to secondary education and minimal formal skilling landscape that exists in the country. That's the first point I wanted to make. So that's to set the context. At the other end, the jobs that are getting created, especially over the last three to four years, let me take a, a span of last three to four years, require new and emerging skills. Uh, and this is thanks to digitalization and the growth of digi digital trade, connectivity and automation, need for solutions and not products. Uh, that's what the cust customers, more and more customers want solution and not really the products. Realignment of global value chains. And this is really a, a very good news, which I will talk about a little later, uh, and which is thanks to the pandemic. And then the growth of asset light -like business models and which you are the best person to, uh, to talk about, and the growing need to collaborate, work in platforms, and innovate. I think uh, as a consequence of these, the jobs that are getting created are very different from what they were created five years ago. So the, that's the second point. The third point is that 
and which is a very important point is a very significant and serious shift to sustainable ways of doing things to holistic sustainability earlier sustainability was more of a lip service today if you do not meet certain sustainability uh, milestones and guidelines you will be out of business for instance whatever you do it has to be environmentally friendly socially inclusive economically viable and ethically correct so if, if you don't tick those four boxes you are out so i think that's the third piece which i wanted to set the fourth piece which i wanted to share was that this pandemic fortunately for us for india has opened up a never before opportunity when it comes to manufacturing just imagine that in 2018 and i'm sure the numbers are same even now china accounted for 30% just one country accounted for 30% of the global manufacturing output which is about 15 trillion dollars and india accounted for just 3% let me not even compare three but fortunately it's very very clear now over the last one year that about 4.6 trillion dollars of global manufacturing output will get rebalanced over many countries now this is a never before opportunity for india what would have happened over the next 15 years can now now happen over the next 3 to 4 years india can double its manufacturing output from 400 billion dollars to 1 trillion dollar over the next 3 to 5 years now here is where we will need those trained skilled manpower and this is really opening up to me the biggest flood gates for for skilling and for jobs opportunity if we get it right and i think the government by and large is doing making the right steps in terms of ease of doing business cost of doing business that's a separate thing as to how we become competitive in, in manufacturing so all these and many more are opening up significant opportunities and as you rightly said very serious imperatives as well if we don't get it right it will become a demographic nightmare and if we get it right it will become a demographic uh, big advantage to india so i think therefore it's a compelling and imperative and opportunity that all of us the government industry society academia we all work together because getting growth back is non negotiable but not without addressing the prisms of protecting lives and livelihoods prioritizing on health skills uh, balancing physical and uh, digital systems rural urban balancing and looking at the future of jobs uh, uh, and 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 social skill so i will i will stop here and then of course uh, over the next one i will uh, like to talk about as to what we are doing at volvo what 200 swedish companies intend to do in india through some program and what we all can probably partner and do together so i will stop there uh, for the sake of time wonderful thank you kamal for uh, setting the context so well with uh, the four very relevant points that you made you know it was interesting uh, you know a couple of weeks ago i was in a village uh, near uh, uh, mandya and i met a 10 standard kid who was talking to me about aml and i was wondering what is aml and he was saying sir something new that is coming and i want to understand more and i couldn't for a while fathom what he was talking about aml then i realized he was talking about ai ml <laughs> right and i was saying so where did you hear about this this is no some uh, whatsapp forward came and my father was telling me you know he is a farmer but he says you know in uh, not just in farming but i want you to start learning about all this and stuff like that so i think that aspiration that young people have to be a part of the mainstream uh, discussion especially when we look at the rural urban side of the things as well and how do we make all of these uh, to be available to every young person every nook and corner of india as a critical aspect to bring upon as well uh, and maybe that's something that we can touch upon as we uh, go forward so with that uh, maybe should i uh, kumar uh, anurag should we uh, you know have you come in and then we can get to venkat did you all leave anything for me to say uh, no. <laughs> huh? uh, the, 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 there are few things which was very interesting when kamal was talking about on uh, the way the way the jobs are changing and i was thinking that when jobs are changing are we really changing the way we are responding to this 
you you cannot you cannot handle the new job requirement by the old methods that you are employing earlier so that's that's one change that we uh, uh, people have started thinking about and we need to bring it as aggressively as the market is changing as the as the as the requirements are changing and you have you have rightly uh, i'll say hit the nails when you said that the aspirations are changing uh, you go to uh, different segments you go to most marginalized people you go to i'd say the the society or the part of society which was excluded earlier what digital has done over the i'll, I'll say the 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 uh, the mobiles have done is they have opened up vistas for them they are now questioning why they are there where they are one and and second they are talking about new things which is uh, which are which which other people are talking and they are aspiring to get that product so that's that's another interesting thing uh, thing that's that's happening third space which i feel very strongly that covid in number of uh, in number of ways taught us so many things and one of the important thing that it taught us was that never take life uh, for granted never take situation for granted never take your i'll say uh, your 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 existence for granted and uh, in that particular sense i always use that particular analogy to say that never take your uh, i'll say approaches for granted never never take your solutions for granted never take your 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 uh, i'll say the design for granted they they need to change they need to change based on the kind of uh, situation that we all are getting in the another angle and which is becoming these days uh, uh, i'll say uh, a strong point during uh, uh, i'll say consultations uh, uh, on the whole idea of or the the need to collaborate because uh, there is huge 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 amount of uh, i'll say uh, synergy that exists between people and institutions Uh, they share values they share uh, the 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 approach to work there's a need to what is called bring people together and 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 these these platforms act as a facilitator uh, uh, to to bring ideas together so that uh, uh, me or madan they we can operate separately or me and kamal can operate separately or me or venkat can operate separately but we when we combine together we bring in i'll say uh, uh, some total is much more than the individual values that we are bringing to the table so that's that's another uh, element that's that's happening and that's happening uh, uh, though the speed may be slow but the 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 need or aspiration is much 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 higher uh, compared to that and and fourth is or or I'll, i i forgot about the number uh, of points that i've shared but another another point that i can certainly add as part of the context is that uh, there's a huge amount of uh, uh, need to link your skilling with forward and backward linkages it cannot operate in isolation you cannot run uh, you can't say that i hey, i'm going to run a skill center by setting up a, a, a skill academy or or is called starting your online platform but you need to also look at what your supply line will be uh, where you are going to get these students from who are these students what kind of uh, i'll say uh, 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 requirement that they are bringing in what kind of aspiration that they are bringing in, and then look at how you are going to engage them with the employers what are your uh, plans related to that so in 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 the skilling can't can't happen in, in isolation and i i do see uh, networks and alliances started talking about or started bringing in people who bring in i'll say values or or uh, uh, traits which are complementary to uh, other people or which will add value to what actually uh, the kind of work that's happening there and there is there is a strong importance that we all need to play uh, place on that as as kamal rightly pointed out that automation or the digital or tech has changed the character of roles which are there or the jobs which are there similarly we need to and I, this is something that i always tell my ngo uh, friends that they need to also change the uh, uh, similar to what car manufacturers or uh, or, or i'll say that uh, any other manufacturers are doing that they always after 3 year 4 year or even lesser than that they they overhaul their product line they come out with a new catalog to say that these are the products that they are offering similarly angels will have to again revisit after every 2 years to say to say that these are the things that they are doing you cannot uh, look into the hopes and aspiration of 2021 youth with the uh, solution uh, basket that you have which was made or created in 1992 or 1993 or even 2001 or 2002 or even 2011 or 2012 things have changed the priorities have changed we need to change and that's that's the that's the context or that's the background that i'll bring in there rest when we'll discuss about some of the work that's happening in the skilling space 
Great. Thank Over you. you Kamal. I think uh, uh, yeah, you've kind of added a lot more dimension to the conversations as well. And uh, this is like two sixes in a row and I'm looking at Venkat now to hit the third six. No, but, but, but you stole the thunder. <laughs> <laughs> you but both. Venkat, you yeah, both. But before we get to you, I just want to uh, probably just amplify uh, the point that you made and maybe that's the next level of conversation on. How do we, I think when one very valid point from a personal experience that worked, uh, that, that, that looked at it is, you know, how, we've, how we should transform ourselves from looking at skilling as an end by itself to a means to an end, right? Uh, you know, when the pandemic broke, uh, and in April, we were scrambling. We had about uh, 4,000 uh, youth in Herald High in our training centers. All of them vanished because obviously, you know, they were not coming to centers, but we almost from the next day started getting panic calls from them saying, sir, there's no food at home, right? How do you, when we were trying to call them up to say, hey, how will you learn? They said, forget how will I learn? How will we eat? Exactly. Right? Exactly. And in less than a month, we had transformed into an organization that uh, was trying to figure out where do you get rations from, how do you distribute it, which Ed and I had never done in its life. And in about three months' time, we ended up distributing about a million uh, food kits to about uh, 10,000 plus families, right? And we had to learn everything from scratch. And as we then started working with other uh, collaborators, we realized that social security was so important. Again, in the last uh, six months, we have done... Uh, We've dispersed over 103 crores worth of social security benefits to 5,000 families again in the last 15 years of our existence. Uh, formally, informally, we had never done any of these things. So one of the things that uh, hit me hard is that don't look at that young person who's attending your course just as a resource, as somebody that you need to impart skills to. But if you expand that and take a holistic view of that person's life and say, how do you help this person get ahead in life? Then you've got to create a lot more other security nets to make sure that this person goes ahead rather than just putting blinkers on and looking at this person just as a resource, right? And I think that is a very big learning which the forward and the backward linkages should include all of this and that should become a part of the journey yeah. itself. So I just wanted to share that as a, as a reflection and uh, Venkat, uh, over to you. Absolutely, Madan. Thank you. Uh, so I'll just pick it up from uh, where you are left that. Uh, so yes, pandemic, if I look back uh, from March, April, the amount of panic we had, what's going to happen? Uh, are we going to come out of this? Uh, what are that we are going to lose? Everything was, the list was big on the losing side. Oh, I'm going to miss this, 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 this. But today, if I see uh, the opportunities we are leverage is uh, tremendously large, right? So definitely uh, those who looked at the opportunities have uh, made advantage of this pandemic situation, right? And this topics which you have selected, skilling, employment, and entrepreneurship is a very appropriate time. So now is the time we can reflect and see all those things. So I coming from an IT background, for me, skilling is always a challenge, right? Uh, technology gets obsolete within no time. So what do we skill in IT, right? I skill in a, a Pascal language that no, doesn't exist anymore. I skill in the Java language, it is in, in the near future, it may not exist. So the kids, today's kids, uh, uh, what is their future career going to be? I would say that it doesn't exist today. The, their career is yet to be created. So that's the way technology is uh, emerging, right? So skilling uh, in uh, technology is really a, uh, uh, challenge. Uh, so where do we skill, right? Uh, so more focus today is given on soft skills, right? So uh, teach them on soft skill. The technology is just a, a byproduct sort of thing, which comes for the kids, right? So in this pandemic period, uh, when we uh, stop all the training, literally the training rooms were closed. Uh, these trainings were all started coming virtual. So what we found that uh, people at home also started background training, you know, if the training session goes on and you actually train the family, not the individual itself, right? So uh, a lot of feedbacks came from the family more than the participants. And that, that was a different experience altogether. So people went back to their native places, like you said, the AAML uh, story about a farmer. Uh, so uh, many of them have gone to back to their native places uh, uh, where they have their roots. And when they start working from them, now they see around their native actually, right? Uh, so they are all working in metros, uh, uh, specifically around IT guys, right? Uh, 
so they never get to go to the villages right so there are now organizations which started their full fledged corporate offices in villages right? uh, they found that uh, uh, it's economical not only economical and they're able to give back to the society because the skilled resources are there communicating to the farmers communicating to the villages and upskilling them so when uh, maybe 6 7 years back when uh, dirba ambani told mutti duniya me right when he launched the alliance mobile literally today it's it means that right so when somebody is having a smartphone in his hand it's literally world in his hand right so today uh, because of this pandemic situation right from uh, the uh, primary uh, school children's everybody's education is now through mobile they are all become mobile savvy and we are able to deliver the content much easier than the pre pandemic stage right uh, so that's the difference uh, pandemic brought with the skills uh, which we are now trying to uh, grow in this regions i'm more uh, uh, talking about the villages uh, where we were not able to reach right so today we are able to reach and digitalization uh, kamal ji and anurag uh, touched on that uh, so we uh, did start the digitalization journey much earlier uh, we didn't wait for the pandemic uh, right from demonetization onwards we started our digital journey you know digital payments has been a revolution in the recent past right so today uh, people uh, hardly go to atms or hardly go to bank or uh, hardly use the instruments like check and dd dd i believe uh, nobody uses now uh, even checks are uh, uh, history now right so it's all digital uh, i i am sure uh, uh, anyone in this panel would have last when visited a bank uh, you may not even remember the date when you visited a bank right so the future is branchless banks right so that it's not going to be a branch for the bank it's already a reality right micro atms is a reality people go uh, with just a, uh, um, a fingerprint uh, machine to a, a villager in the villages it's all happening now as we speak uh, uh, just a, a thumb print is enough uh, for uh, enabling an other enabled payment system he can withdraw cashes just across his uh, uh, door step so that's where the digitalization has grown uh, and pandemic specifically uh, since everything got shut down uh, this opportunity is increased and now people are very savvy about uh, digitalization because with no options list uh, they started practicing digitalization i am sure uh, though brick and mortar cannot be uh, removed uh, completely but the percentage is going to be significantly higher on the digital space uh, for sure and the third thing i wanted to uh, touch uh, which uh, kamal ji already touched is on the manufacturing side make in india right that is great push uh, though it was started long ago this pandemic situation forced us to really look into it hard and ensure that make in india uh, is uh, getting its momentum and uh, already we are into it and a lot of uh, opportunities have opened foreign investments have started coming in uh, india has become the Uh, uh country to look at uh, 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 now that china is having its own uh, uh, limitations uh, right so uh, make in india has come as a long way now so definitely we can see that in the coming years uh, indigenous is going to up, uh, upscale uh, compared to all the uh, foreign uh, uh, things which is going to be available here right so um, coming to entrepreneurship that this make in india is opening up the opportunities for our entrepreneurs right so the indian entrepreneurs are going to uh, go a long way uh, because of this opportunities which opened in the in this 2020 uh, year right so there has been uh, downstreams uh, because of the pandemic uh, people did uh, suffer but relatively i would put that the percentage is higher on the people who gained uh, uh, from this uh, pandemic uh, so it's like uh, um, uh, they say right uh, teach a teach a person to fish uh, then giving him the fish so uh, that's what uh, exactly happened right uh, now uh, I, i i don't have the statistics but if someone uh, sees the statistics i'm sure the entrepreneurs would have grown uh, much more in this year 2020 compared to uh, previous years so with government giving the benefits on msme uh, uh, um, uh, entrepreneurs uh, uh, basically giving the loan uh, subsidy and stuff like that a lot of them have stepped in right? and um, a huge uh, interest has come in in the farming right so i have, i have my own team members who have gone back to the villages 
who are doing farming uh, as part time now right so he is staying in his house doing the day day job for the organization and he is helping his parents in the farming also so i have multiple examples like that uh, people have gone back to their uh, uh, traditional uh, works as well so this is for good uh, so i'll speak more about what we do as an organization thank you thank you venkat i think uh, the intersection of digital make in india the whole startup india and uh, you know i think is as you said throwing up throwing open a lot of possibilities and i love the way you framed it saying let's look at what we can win rather than what we lost because there's uh, you know if we start focusing on the silver lining we'll see more of it right uh, and maybe 2021 is the year for the silver lining rather than the dark clouds right uh, i just want to uh, uh, put in another element into the mix uh, especially uh, i know it's an underlying theme across but i firmly believe that uh, you know if you want to create equitable growth and uh, and a distributed growth uh, which is not just dependent on the metros uh, in fact there was one comment on what do we do in rural finally the the capability or the or the capacity of the formal or the organized sector to create uh, jobs is only limited to 10 15% uh, of the number of people who enter the workforce today over 500 million people who are in the uh, uh, workforce uh, less than 50 million are employed by the organized sector uh, so how do we then ensure that for the incoming 100 million people can we create x number of uh, youth entrepreneurs which could be 5 million 10 million who can then go on to create 5 10 jobs each because job creation as a lens for entrepreneurs is really not been the forte that we have seen in our msme sector because 95% of our enterprises of the 8 odd million enterprises are uh, either solo or less than 3 people enterprises so Uh, one of our uh, initiatives at game and also at uh, at uh, at herald high at bunbridge at uh, you are where uh, you know anurag is also a part of that uh, that collective there and we'll come to that is how do you how do you uh, how do you enable entrepreneurial mindsets as a critical 21st century skill and how do you get entrepreneurial thinking to be embedded in every youth who is exiting uh, any college and what sort of opportunities can we create for them to create their own uh, jobs and the jobs could be in manufacturing their own enterprises can be in digital can be in tourism whatever and and what kind of an ecosystem do we need to create to make local jobs available i think this is another critical one i mean uh, you know well we definitely have the ministry of skills development and entrepreneurship uh skills development would have would have been probably 90 95% of the narrative than entrepreneurship so far and i think that needs to shift very rapidly right uh so i just wanted to add that uh, element into the mix as we reflect in the next phase uh we perhaps can go around one round and then see if you have any questions and and i would love to have each one of you reflect on your own csr journey so far and uh, <laughs> especially post pandemic how do you see your role as a a a corporate citizen uh changing and and what kind of changes do we need to use this uh, you know do we used to do we need to use this opportunity to force some changes into the way that we've been operating so far uh, i'd love to get your reflections so yeah so do you want to come on we'll come back to you yeah yeah can i go yeah yes, of course yeah okay yeah madan uh, thank you and very good uh, comments made by the other speakers as well thank you very much i think we have really expanded the uh, the, the the width of the and depth of this discussion uh, thank you very much so let me uh, go back to um, uh, your point on entrepreneurship uh, how do we create so so what we are doing and uh, let me just share that with you madan and i think i will also discuss this with you offline as to how we can take this forward we are Uh, we in gothenburg in sweden had created something called campax uh, campax is a innovation arena where people from multiple disciplines and stages of maturity and competence work together to solve some common compelling problems uh, so it could be people from uh, regulators uh, it could be startups it could be uh, it has to always start with an anchor industry a large player and then opening up doors for 
startups, uh, young entrepreneurs who otherwise normally would never get into the system of a large company like a Volvo or a, or a, or a large company. Uh, so we are repeating the same thing in Bangalore. Very happy to say that we are creating Campex here where we will encourage uh, uh, entrepreneurs, academia, um, regulators to work together to solve common problems. So we have already decided and we are going to work on number of problems and this would be inaugurated uh, later in this, within this quarter, uh, within the month of. So this will be a full-fledged uh, facility which will, so this to my mind would be a very big uh, uh, takeaway for, from the entrepreneurship. So the concept here is that you need a couple of anchor industries and then around that build a platform of entrepreneurs who can, so, and everybody wins in this game. You increase the, you, you raise the, enhance the size of the, of the value chain and everybody across that, and you will be surprised that in, a, in, in, the, in the trucking industry, the kind of new revenue streams which are getting created as a consequence of this is amazing. It's amazing. So I think that's one very, very quickly. Let me go very quickly to the kind of work which we are doing. We have started an academy called Rasta, R-A-S-T-A. Rasta is, uh, uh, we, here we provide M-Tech. This is at a higher level, M-Tech degrees. This is part of the uh, Vishweshwarya VTU University. We have tied up with them. So we provide road and highway engineering. So that's one way of taking the spectrum high on because uh, infrastructure is going to be a very, very big thing. And we need good road and highway engineers on, on the upper end of the spectrum. So that's one. And of course, we have these uh, uh, driver and operator training centers where we are partially partnering with GMR also. And we have started a micro enterprise in Hoskote for women. And together with other Swedish companies, I'm also the chairman of Swedish Chamber of Commerce in India. We are starting a concept called Craft Samla. Craft Samla is basically uh, getting, uh, is basically uh, something to do again on skilling, but the focus is only on women. Uh, so, so there are, we have trained already about in the Pune belt, more than 200 women forklift drivers and, uh, and some Maharashtra government signed, uh, signed up with us and we've done a lot of work there. So I think those are some of the things which we need to do. Uh, and and we can we can discuss. We need to form some platforms. And, and I think Madan, you are the right man. If you can, if you can get some of us together, the the we can join uh, forces to build something which can give much larger and bigger results. So I think that's one, of course. And as you rightly said, uh, during the pandemic time, we did so many things which we never did earlier. Uh, distributing groceries to to uh, thousands of uh, uh, people. Uh, we worked on com community development, building toilets and other things. So so number of stuff which we have done, which the usual stuff which we all do. But I think very importantly to your point that how do we create the spirit of entrepreneurship? If each one of us can create 100 entrepreneurs, it is not a very big, it's not a very big number. And I think you need anchor industries, large industries, around which, and there the mindset has to change. As Anurag very, very rightly said, a lot of these solutions will come when we change our mindsets of, of opening the doors wider instead of closing doors and saying, I want to protect my business. I think that is a losing proposition. You've got to open the doors wider to really make it, make it matter. So more as we discuss, as we take along. Yeah. Thank you, Kamal. I think lots of interesting initiatives and thoughts, and as you said, uh, you know, keeping the doors wider open rather than protecting turf is the key that uh, I think the key learning that uh, we all need to take. So, Anurag, over to you. The, the, the two, three things, uh, uh, Madan. One is that the whole mindset of uh, parents about uh, child getting a job rather than starting yeah. your own. Or starting your own. Because if you ask the average parent, they'll say that uh, why to take a risk? Because there are risks attached to it. Who's going to put in the money? And it's better to, what's called, uh, get on to the job. 
and it's it's fact also it's 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 easier to earn a salary of uh, thirty thousand rupees or fifty thousand rupees per month than to make a profit of fifty thousand rupees every month uh, because uh, everyone if 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 we look at our own catchment of people with whom we work. For them, it's it's they they don't have the patience, and and nor we should be expecting them to have the patience because they are dealing with uh, uh, some of the uh, struggles are very very important, critical, and they need to respond as quickly as possible. They don't have the patience of I'll say, uh, 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 I'll say uh, people from our own background where we can say that yes, I have a buffer for around three years. I can I can have a patience for three years to uh, getting the kind of return that I'm expecting. so it it requires huge amount of work on the on the on on the mindset to tell people that what you are creating you are creating a legacy which you can what is called certainly hand it over or certainly nurture it to scale it up the way you want to scale it up that that's one the the second is the 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 readiness of the uh, uh, people to allow uh, uh, another businesses to uh, start uh, readiness to facilitate encourage promote support The, and, and that that's not an easy job to uh, do because uh, it, it, it's 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 everyone is uh, busy with their own life that it's it's difficult to what is called ask them that can you can you in the sense also mentor uh, people who are in the same stage that as as you were uh, three years two years back. Third is the 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 whole uh, I'll say the investment on creating network and alliances which can deliver these some of these stuff. we had a discussion earlier also madan on this particular topic and i i always say this that there's a, there's there's a huge amount of effort that needs to be built on building the trust uh, uh, among the members who are there in 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 these networks and these alliances i i have a very unique definition of these networks i always uh, call these networks are where net is mine work is your i'll just net it and i'll talk about it as my work and and that in the sense create a huge amount of trust deficit if you don't work on creating that particular uh, trust between your alliance member you will be never be able to create a, a ecosystem which can facilitate entrepreneurs to de- get developed and sustain uh, uh, what we are trying to do and 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 and, and be very honest with you uh, our focus has been largely on job creation uh, if i look at my investment then my i'll say 85% of my investment is getting in job creation and and only 15% is getting in 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 the entrepreneurship uh, related stuff and what we are doing is in a very limited manner uh, there are two three things one is uh, we have uh, we have taken uh, last year uh, ambitious agenda to support startups for their scale up mandate and the whole idea is that can we uh, through our uh, techno managerial support can we through our mentorship can we through our business uh, linkages can we through our uh, uh, the network that we have help these startup to get the scale that they are looking for so i identified four of them through a very intensive process uh, 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 where we had the initial uh, uh, application was more than 100 we did multiple round to identify people who had the uh, uh, hunger in their belly to really uh, uh, reach to the next level that they were they were aiming for and secondly who were willing to what is called bring in community to share their uh, profit because you don't want to invest in someone where uh, their 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 interest is only to build their own personal empires rather than looking at options and opportunity to share it with the larger community so that that's one work that we have done the second work that we have done is uh, which we have recently launched uh, it started a idea challenge round where we are what we are saying is that we will identify the 10 best ideas will help them for uh, uh, two year with again with financials and uh, financial and uh, technical managerial support and mentorship support to what is called help them develop their pocs and mvps so that uh, they can take it to the market and see uh, whether they can they can run it uh, uh, on their own or not the the third part is uh, again uh, working with some of the uh, uh, organization and that's a tougher one because uh, the the whole idea is that can we influence the msm market in some way or the other uh, where uh, you you create you help people and this is this won't be possible only with capgemini getting involved because we do not have the financial uh, strength to back the interest or or the requirement that the msm will be having fortunate that we got some of our financial clients who are uh, or clients who have uh, 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 finance as their uh, key key business dna uh, who are who are working with us to look at uh, 
can we train them can we make them ready to start their own business fund them uh, uh, based on some of the uh, uh, the requirements or some of the uh, criteria that these institutions are having and help them what is called start their own start uh, start the operation on their own and and uh, which in the sense will also enable uh, 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 them to become a job creator rather than looking for jobs only so these are three uh, uh, work that we we are doing and uh, i can i can very safely say that uh, going forward the 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 80 50 85 15% investment ratio that you see today will change and it it will certainly become 70 30 or 60 40 in coming i'll say one or two years or so because we do uh, acknowledge the need uh, and and rationale of having a very strong uh, uh, portfolio on entrepreneurship there because it has the potential of impacting more number of people uh, by uh, uh, transforming one individual and 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 his or her uh, ambition and aspiration that uh, they'll be having Uh, uh, uh and on the larger side i'll i'll say that uh, there is a huge huge requirement uh, uh, uh where i i see uh, both kind of uh, uh, companies should come together where uh, one is manufacturing second is service sector uh, they need to come together bring in the the kind of skill set that they are having skill set not not necessarily at the abstract level but it is skill set purely from the employee side who can then work with uh, these these individuals who have the the a right kind of uh, uh, hunger in their belly to uh, really really influence uh, the work that's happening in entrepreneurship fifth is we do not have many strong players in this uh, to be very very uh, honest on this we have many players on skilling we have many players who are actively pursuing the agenda of skilling people to get on to the next level of job uh, that is getting created but you don't have too many uh, active players on entrepreneurship uh, they do not have modules which are tempting enough uh, i'll be uh, i'm 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 playing very uh, with a straight bat i am I'm not in the sense uh, uh, right now mincing words when i'll say that uh, we don't we don't we don't have uh, models which are tempting for corporates when we say that hey let let work on this and when i say tempting it 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 it's 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 all about how you're packaging it how you're pricing it uh, if you are not pricing it properly you're not going to get too many takers for that because uh, it it's the whole question of how reliable the whole product is and and that's where i i strongly feel that uh, the the uh, the service offering that the ngos are these days talking about on the skilling they should certainly also start talking about entrepreneurship and how they can indenize the uh, service offering they can't bring in the offering which was good in i'll say in in for me if i i, I can use that for an example of bringing in one uh, offering from france or bringing in some european offering or from us and then try to get it at exactly. india it won't work you need to indenize it you need to look at our own situation because their parents may be excited to get their uh, kid get involved in an entrepreneurship program in india majority of parents will say that look for a job it's good for you nahi to the the larger argument will be ki pata nahi mera bachcha kya kar raha hai correct because they are not very sure of uh, what they are uh, what they are actually doing because when they get a job they can always flaunt it by saying that mera bachcha is working with volvo or working with fis or working with capgemini uh, uh, but uh, uh, exactly. they no one wants to say that they are working with anurag enterprises he started a, a puncher ki dukaan correct so correct. it 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 it, 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 it is also about the kind of status uh, uh, that they they are looking for yeah yeah perfect now i thank you for your uh, you know uh, candid comments and i think that's the nature that we need to change uh, i also love uh, i think we had discussed that and you said listen from a collaborative effort we need to not just the network uh, network but also leave our egos and logos out and then figure yes, out sir. what is the egos impact. and logos out yeah that i always and that's a copy over. copyrighted phrase that i by asking people to use it and they need to acknowledge right. that this was anurag saying yeah totally which is why i'm bringing it back to you <laughs> if you don't leave your ego and logo it's a no go i've added another one yeah, it's a no go yeah <laughs> exactly okay great exactly. so yeah uh, venkat uh, a few minutes uh, reflections from you yeah sure uh, so uh, entrepreneurship is a great topic uh, I, for me it is uh, uh like i keep wondering why i have not become an entrepreneur myself <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, I, so uh it's it's more uh 
requiring the uh, ability to sustain a business and run a business on, by himself right uh, so it's not about uh, just investments and uh, just making a person become an entrepreneur grooming him uh, to become an entrepreneur is where uh, we focus more from fis perspective right uh, like what anurag rightly said to uh, uh, give that sort of investment and make a person entrepreneur it requires a lot of investments uh, which may not be sustainable but uh, grooming him uh, to ensure that uh, he can uh, become an entrepreneur by himself and sustain uh, uh, with some minimum investments and then grow by himself right that's where we are focusing our own right uh, so we uh, in order to become a larger uh, view of india becoming a powerful uh, we start uh, right from a village uh, we choose some kids there and invest them in a very early age uh, in grooming them uh, with regard to education and uh, how he grows his career uh, so when uh, this this guy when he goes back to his village he uh, parts that knowledge with his family so that uh, this family becomes knowledgeable uh, that in turn became makes the village knowledgeable and that's how we grow right yeah. to uh, uh, a wide area and yeah. bring up that so some of the programs we run is adopt a village also mm. so that we uh, uh, train the villagers uh, uh, so most of the cases uh, the villagers have the skill themselves doesn't know how to uh, convert it into a business model uh, uh, so we, they don't need investments also they have uh, all that required to run a business but it's just the knowledge uh, how to convert that to business is what would be lagging right exactly. so we we fill that gap space uh, we ensure that those things are all uh, focused around that. Uh, so, uh, so the, so some of the uh, students we even uh, uh, sponsored to go to US uh, oh. uh, for higher education. So when they come back, uh, so that entire village is gained by the knowledge he's going to come back, right? Uh, so uh, you'd be surprised that some of the uh, kids we sponsored uh, had one award from Michelle Obama when Obama was in power, right? So yeah. that is the caliber of people who are unnoticed and there in the villages, right? So we invest our time and efforts in these sort of people uh, so that we can groom them to become an entrepreneur uh, subsequently. Uh, uh, so as I said, Make in India is anyway going to open up a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurs. So just the mindset, uh, see like probably like I said, I'm not an entrepreneur because uh, I've been groomed telling, okay, IT, you go work for a multinational company, you get right. So to that mindset of uh, uh, getting into an entrepreneurship uh, is what uh, we need to plan to these uh, youngsters uh, so that they can uh, win as an entrepreneur. So that's where right. FIS is investing. Thank Wonderful. Yeah. Now, lovely to hear your views. And I think... Uh, as Kamran was also mentioning, the future of uh, work will become more and more individual-based and therefore entrepreneurial-based rather than organization-based. Uh, and that's where the digital world will take us to. And uh, the more we can start laying the foundations of an entrepreneurial society where people are able to take uh, uh, you know, opportunities and explore them uh, rather than waiting for, as I say, waiting for Godo and uh, hoping that somebody else will come and deliver them uh, certain jobs. I think that switch is super critical in this decade. Uh, I'm just going through the uh, chat and the comments. Uh, I think one of the comments uh, in the chat was around this whole, uh, you know, uh, focusing on decentralized development uh, rather than everybody focusing on urban. And uh, how do we make sure that there is an equitable uh, and, and rural areas get developed? Any, any quick comments on that? Yes, yeah, I think yeah, very. Uh, I can speak up for a minute on this. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So, Madan, uh, I think this pandemic has opened another opportunity for include for diversity and inclusivity. You know, and this is basically work from anywhere concept. You know? A lot of jobs are shifting to uh, maybe smaller towns, tier two towns, tier three towns. And, and people are working pretty well. And we have, we have seen this over the last six to seven months. And which means that you can get a lot more uh, development in those areas. Everybody doesn't have to be in a Bangalore or a Pune, Pune or a Mumbai or an NCR area. So I think that's one good news. And of course, these are early days. There are There is always a challenge of working from anywhere uh, in terms of the organization culture which you build. 
so that so there are always some paradoxes but there is one good news that work from anywhere is becoming a reality to a large extent which means tier 2 towns and smaller uh, there will be a development all around exactly exactly completely with you and i I'll, and I'll, I'll, i'll also add here is that it's it's if no one wants to ignore rural in that particular sense if you ask anyone they'll say that because rural for in all possible sense will give me the cost advantage but the whole question of uh, the the readiness of people to get trained there and willing uh, willingness to move to urban centers because that's where the business is i i cannot shift capgemini for example i cannot shift my offices to uh, uh, rural areas because i i i am not present there that's that's a fact and 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 the the i i and what i see these days is and and I, it may be a, uh, the the there are multiple options and opportunities for a young uh, person to get trained and get the job uh, close to their uh, uh, homes but i do see tendency of uh, uh, youth also saying that they are not willing to travel even 10 kilometers or 15 kilometers to the job and that's where i always say that uh, uh, the jobs are there uh, but there are there are people who are ready to train you also but there should be some readiness from uh, uh, the other side also because trade off need to happen from both the side it cannot be one way traffic and and, and that's one second is we will have to somewhere accept that uh, life has uh, life was never supposed to be fair life was never supposed to be linear life was never supposed to give you everything that you desire and wanted and uh, there are uh, inequal- inequalities which exist in this world rural urban divides are there and and we can't what is called uh, 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 just just close our eyes and say that it doesn't exist and the fact is that all our offices or most of the offices are there in rural area uh, urban areas and that's where their uh, jobs are we need to make our people also ready to uh, uh, move there work from home is, uh, is is a good option but i'll i'll be also very honest and candid here that it it's it's not going to replace uh, the the work from office uh, completely the work from office will have the prominence there and uh, and and uh, for man- manufacturing industry you can't operate you can't manufacture sitting at home you need to come to the factories there uh, and in that particular sense we'll have to what is called be ready to if we ask all four of us who are sitting there in the panel we move from our roots sir. we are we are not we are not in the same place where we were when we were born and and we took that particular risk we came out and 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 came out for uh, uh, realize certain dreams and the same needs to be i'll say uh, shared with the youth who is looking for options uh, and, and 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 opportunities absolutely makes sense uh, as well uh, venkat any in the interest of time any last uh, comments from you before i yeah, wrap so, uh, yeah from uh, it industry perspective i did touch upon uh, some of the organization have already started setting up their offices in uh, rural areas uh, so it was surprise my own experience in rural areas i got uh, better bandwidth uh, in rural areas than the cities so today probably because of pandemic uh, everybody working from home in cities it's uh, choking the band with an apartment with say 500 houses all 500 are connected and you don't get the bandwidth so in rural i i i got a very good bandwidth so it's a nice opportunity for me also to work there more than compared to my city home uh, so it's it's improving uh, like i said uh, the digital world is improving and hence uh, every house in india has to have a fiber connected it's all happening as we speak right so once you have the uh, internet available in mukund corner of the country the uh, growth cannot be stopped it is uh, uh, going to happen i agree, yeah, I agree. completely with you i think this has been a fascinating discussion and I, i i know we can go on for hours because the topic is so broad and we can go as deep as we want uh, uh thank you so much for each of your comments and trying to kind of uh, summarize the key takeaways from a if i were a young csr professional listening into this and if i were to distill out what are the learnings for me i would probably put especially from a skills employment and entrepreneurship standpoint i probably put the following summary one is uh take a systems view uh let's not take a siloed approach we should try and understand how the system works and therefore the supply chain linkages forward backward etc is super critical otherwise we are all living in our own wells uh two let's understand uh the aspirations of young people and try and leverage that before we can design any program there is 
solutions are changing, problem statements are changing, environments are changing. How do we truly understand the customer that we are working for and make sure that whatever we do is catered to that uh, customer, which is the youth in this case. Third, how do we make sure that everything we do is future-proof, that we are not living in the 90s and the 2000s, but we are actually building for the 2030? And what kind of programs and initiatives must we do that will stand the test of time five years hence or 10 years hence, right? And if it means junking some of the older thoughts because uh, that, and not because just we, because we've invested so heavily into that, but taking a fresh look, I think that's a critical one. Uh, the fourth point is therefore aligned to the system view is try and be a part of as many collaboratives, collectives as possible because the problem is so huge that one person or one entity figuring out that we can solve it all by ourselves is grossly mistaken. Uh, and that's our experience at UR, the UNICEF initiative that we are all a part of. We were trying to figure out how do we come together to solve this problem together with the youth at the center of the universe. And lastly, I want to leave uh, with the thought that finally, you know, if you were to reflect on life, it is not about uh, how much money did we earn or uh, how much of, uh, you know, meals uh, did I fill my stomach with. I think all that is important. But I think the critical one is what difference did I make to the world around uh, me? And therefore, can we start looking at skills much beyond jobs and entrepreneurship into youth leadership, right? How can we start looking at every young person as a societal leader who can solve community problems around them? And if we can solve for the leadership conundrum, then I think uh, jobs, uh, entrepreneurial opportunities, everything will fix out by itself. So if we can build from the base and not stop at just jobs, but can we go beyond jobs into youth leadership? I think the world will become a much better place. Maybe these are some of the reflections uh, that I want to leave you with. And uh, uh, to this group, I mean, uh, through India CSR and the operation team, I would love to figure out how do we build a collaborative community here, uh, which make sure that no wheel is ever reinvented. How do we make sure that every ounce of effort that each of us put is additive uh, enough to, to this larger vision of making every youth a youth leader and, and, and ensuring that their pathways to economic opportunities is completely filled uh, up. I think that is the action point that I would love to leave for uh, all of us uh, listening in. I know I've seen a lot of interesting comments from uh, 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 you know audience on, on the stuff that they're doing. I have noted them down. I will work with Apresh to make sure that any interesting information reaches out at least to this panel. And I'm sure this is just the beginning of a conversation and not the end of it. So with that, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Kamal, Anurag, uh, Venkat, uh, and look forward to lots more work and uh, conversations together. And thanks to the India CSR team for uh, pulling us all together. Thank you. Very thank you, Madan.